This is Michaela McLean, and you're listening to Beauty by Design. Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks for being here. It's time to talk about our next game. But before we do, of course, just want to catch you up on the current happenings. Um, This coming Monday, September 18th at 11 a.m., Ageless Ashley and I are doing one of our aesthetically aligned uh, meetings, collaborations. I like, what do we even call it? But it's going to be a focus on the sun. I was like, hey, no SPF required for this. <laughs> this is uh, a focus on your sun sign. Of course, there's human design involved, but it, we're also really tying in astrology to this. Um, and these are just fun. They're they're great great way to come together, learn with everyone. A little live synthesis. Who knows? Who knows where the uh, the time will take us? But I highly encourage you to join. Uh, the link is in my Instagram bio at Michaela McLean. Um, I say that actually, I, I need to add it. Usually I'm so on top of this stuff, but it's in stories right now. It's all over the place. So make sure that you go sign up and yeah, come join us. I think it's going to be super fun. And then of course my energetic aesthetics wait list, definitely get on there. Uh, I was just, I just saw a story from Ashley and she was talking about being in, in the training that I did at aesthetic next. And you know, I'm just so excited. I, I came home from Dallas and was like, okay, girl, like get to work. There's just so much. I feel like there's so much to be, there's so much that exists and so much to be done to like, you know, get it out into the world. But I, I don't know. I love this work. I love it so much. And I just want to get it out to people. So join the wait list if that interests you. If you're like, I'm ready to bring actual, healing and um and not from a very vague place like really quite grounded place uh into my treatment room no matter what type of provider that you are so hop on that of course again the link is in the show notes and instagram bio all right so for now like let's just get on let's get on into it um gate six okay so we are progressing through Virgo, we're at the end. Um, So gate six is located in the emotional solar plexus, and it's part of the tribal defense circuitry. This is the part that is concerned with creating and sustaining life. So tribal energy, though, on a whole, I always say it's it's the hippie commune. You know, everybody's contributing to the support and the survival of the group. But it's on the more yin, feminine, experiential, intuitive, and receptive side of the chart. And the keynote with all tribal energy is always support. Um, and this definitely, like I said, it's the defense piece of it too. So all of the solar plexus skates, of course, revolve around the feels. So the emotional solar plexus is both a motor uh, the energy that it produces comes in waves and our center for emotional awareness and intelligence. It also governs spirit consciousness, what it truly means for us all to be one. Now, quick side note, it's interesting because this is the only one of the solar plexus gates that is not Pisces or Aquarius. Everything else that exists over there is. Um, but this is tied to one of them. Very special for me, but we'll get there. Uh, and FYI, of course, you know, the awareness centers, uh, which the solar plexus is one of them, they all carry fear. It's like this fear element, you know, basically when the energy is not being used correctly. So in this case, with the emotional solar plexus, it's all, um, it's, it's an emotional anxiety that exists here. So gate six is known as conflict. It's the gate of friction and it states growth cannot exist without friction. This is the gate that creates awareness of feelings, moods, and sensitivity. And the keynote with this is a fear of intimacy. It's a kind of diaphragm that generates a wave by either opening or closing to intimacy. And there's this nervousness, right? We already discussed that. Nervousness about revealing who you really are. Gate six is also about the skin. (laughs) And I'm like, spoiler. If you've heard this before, you know, but this is my conscious earth, or in Gene Keys, it's my evolution sphere, sphere, excuse me, can't even pronounce that, sphere, where um, for me, it's where I'm meant to be like very grounded. So six is related to the body's pH, 
I always attribute this as like, this is why I was always like overly concerned with the pH of skincare products. I used to have like the little like tester thing, the digital one. I'd had the strips. I was very, very into it. <laughs> um, but anyway, I really see gate six as being more about the energetic pH. You know, it's the pH of your aura. Uh, and I was like marinate on that, right? It's like, what or who do you allow to permeate your aura? What or who do you allow to get close or do you keep at arm's length? I always think about this being that Virgo gate, right? It's like, where may you benefit from being more discerning and discriminating in your life? Um, with six, there can be extreme hesitancy to allow others in, you know, and it definitely wants to get close to other people, but there's this element of like playing hard to get, you know, thing going on with this gate. I always think of it. It's like, it's an emotional bouncer at the club. You know, there's the velvet rope. Not everybody gets to get inside the aura, you know? <laughs> so the low expression with this one is like really hard emotional boundaries, um, friction, emotional conflict, lack of emotional maturity, you know, not knowing how to handle the struggles. Personally, and this is, <laughs> I just love it when I get very like honest on here. It's like icing people out. You know, it's like there's a natural barrier there and then further putting up more emotional walls between you and other people. Um, conversely, though, you can be conditioned to not have enough boundaries and let the wrong people and the wrong energy into your auric space. Um, the high expression, though, the peacekeeper, the peacemaker, always bringing things into balance. It's very, gate six is very like peace, love, and harmony in its highest expression. It's it's calm, it's Zen vibes, it's super chill. Um, and I think about those two, that, that polarity, it's like angry and inflamed skin, right? That's like, ugh, it's barriers destroyed versus calm, soothed, smooth, and serene skin, you know? You can just, just get a, a nice mental picture there. But, you know, like I said, if you're like me, which is naturally hyper discerning and discriminating about who and what I allow in, you know, you could take a look, like, where could I allow more closeness to others and potentially let some of those emotional walls down? However, at the same time, gate six people are designed this way for a reason. So I'm not saying like drop them all, right? It's like, be discerning. Um because we're kind of meant to know what is and isn't right for us energetically. Uh, you know, and again, I, I kind of go back to the skin. It's like, if you disrupt the barrier with, you know, like the, the, the natural pH, like the acid mantle of your skin with things that are way too acidic or way too alkaline, um, you're repeatedly using things that are stripping, you know, over exfoliating, over peeling, whatever it's, you're going to have a problem. You know, if, especially if it's a chronic and ongoing exposure, you know, to weaken and disrupt or destroy even the skin's natural protective barrier, it creates the potential for all kinds of problems, you know, acne, rosacea, eczema, rashes, infections, delayed healing, wound, you know, you can create wounds like this, you know, it keeps going on. And why is that? Because you came into contact with something too harsh that did not belong on your skin or too frequently or, you know, just too much. Um, and I just think of that. It's like, it's so, it's such a parallel or a mirror to your energy, your aura, right? Some people just like skincare that is not appropriate for you do not belong in your space, in your circle. They don't belong that close to your energy or maybe not that much that frequently. Um, and I always think about this. I'm like being hyper discerning. Does not make you a bad person? You know, I'm like, I have all these like love gates in my chart. It's like, I have love for people, but I just, there's a sense of timing. Like, you know, just, I don't know. It's weird. It's like some people you can let right in and other people it's like, yeah, no, not so much. I'm still going to be nice. I'm still going to be cordial. You know, I'm, it's not that. It's just like, mm, I don't know. I don't know how I feel yet, you know? <laughs> like, uh, and, and again, it's just your energy speaking to, to it. Gate six controls the emotional timing of either pulling people in to bond with them or pushing them away, right? So there's something in your energy field that's doing it. Sometimes it's like, it's not really about, I'm thinking about this. It's just how you are wired to work. 
And then the other thing, I, I'm like, you know, check your chart. Are you, my chart's so open and I have gate 19 twice. It's like, I got, I can't be just, you know, uh, willy nilly about, about who I let in, you know, I got to be grounded here. Um, but if you have this gate, you know, it really, you are really impacting those around you and how they're going to feel. And that I always think like, that's a big responsibility, you know? So if you're a six person, one of your responsibilities is to be very calm and centered and emotionally chill, you know, for the rest of the people that you come into contact with. Um, and again, you know, gene keys, we're going to get into this here, but uh, they really talk about the pH is a metaphor for everything in the world because it is about the balance or the homeostasis that I love. To, I love that word. I love to talk, use that word, talk about it. Um, so, you know, it's like, Hey, we gotta, we gotta keep that peaceful and ideal uh, pH in our environment. So in the gene case, the shadow is conflict. The gift is diplomacy and the city is peace. And the Gene Keys states the sixth shadow of conflict is the single most influential Gene Key in regard to the issue of, the, of human communication. At its highest potential, the sixth key is the archetype of peace on earth, while at its lowest potential, it is the root cause of all human conflict. This conflict stems from the human emotional system and our inability to handle the voltage of extreme emotional states. Conflict breaks out wherever two or more people agree to identify with their emotional state. Hmm, that's good. Uh, he says, as long as you surrender uh, your will to the emotional system, then you will be trapped by its volatile nature. If you are utterly ruled by your emotions, there can be no sense of harmony inside you. It is well known how much your emotional state influences your biological health. If you are stressed emotionally, your body will suffer. Emotional problems are the greatest cause of illness on our planet. And this 36th shadow of turbulence, my sun gate, <laughs> uh, the 36th shadow of turbulence, which is the programming partner to the sixth shadow, uh, reinforces this fact. So 36 conditions you to be nervous when you feel uncertain or insecure about anything in life. It is this nervousness that forms the background frequency of our whole planet. The biofeedback loop between these two shadows is rooted in nervousness and defensiveness. The 36th shadow make, makes you feel nervous, excuse me, feeding the sixth shadow, which responds through making you behave defensively. Likewise, your own defensiveness makes other people behave in a nervous manner around you. Human beings are consciously, unconsciously, excuse me, human beings are unconsciously addicted to conflict. We long for peace individually and globally, but our collective low frequency ensures that we keep reinforcing the patterns of conflict. Nowhere is this seen more clearly than in our relationships. Um, you know, basically, he says, like, you know, the sixth shadow is all about boundaries and borders, right? Who is included, who is excluded. And it's, and he says, its entire basis is defense. Um, the sixth shadow makes you feel like you have to defend yourself from whatever danger is out there you know and you can see that both at a personal level and a global level right and a lot of this you know the life energy like this is coming from us these patterns have been laid down in childhood right so we're trying to still as adults protect ourselves from these emotionally volatile situations that you experienced as a child or an adolescent um and he's just like, unless we deal with this, you know, we're going to continue to carry this throughout our adult lives. And, you know, two sides of these shadows, it's like, there's always the repressive, you know, the more yin like side of it and the yang, and that's the reactive. And the yin is all about, you know, Hey, I got to be a people pleaser. I can't have any, any disruption of anything. You know, I'm going to compromise myself just to make everything smooth. Right. Um, again, people pleasing. And then the other side of it is, you know, going to be more explosive, um, you know, just like the backlash and just as it says, venting their anger, projecting it onto other people. They're, you know, they can't take responsibility for their own volatile feelings. Um, and then he says the most common defense is to lash out and then storm away. I'm just going to say personally in my life, 
I'm the first one. I'm the repressive. Like, I'm just going to sweep it under the rug. It's okay. Let's not talk about it, you know? And like, that's not okay either. Um, I let a lot of stuff slide, you know? Um, but he says, at a heightened frequency, the sixth gift pulls rapidly away from the world of conflict and argumentation. Um, the, this is the gift of diplomacy, the ability to adjust your own behavior to create a harmonious exchange with others. And this gift is a bright product of opening your heart to another person. As you become clearer about your own emotional conditioning, you begin to feel more peaceful. Because this gift is so deeply connected with the pH balance in your physical body, it also has the effect of stabilizing the emotional aura in your environment. In other words, when one is able to see their own unconscious projections, they actually rupture the collective shadow patterns wherever they go. And he says that the gift of diplomacy is far more than the ability to speak the right words. Uh, you know, like that is a surface skill that can be mastered by anyone, even at a low frequency. True diplomacy is an energetic gift operating through a person's aura. And the sixth gift is breaking down the barriers in human relationships. And he says the ultimate defense is emptiness. This is the essence of wisdom taught by the great sages. Defense maintains the illusion that we are separate. As such, it is truly futile because it, it protects against something that doesn't really exist in the first place. Peace is the reality that is experienced once all boundaries have dissolved. It is the true nature of humanity. So many of the great teachers have spoken of the peace of the sixth city when Jesus stated that the kingdom of heaven was, had already arrived, uh, but people simply cannot see it. He was talking about this city. Super deep one, so much more to get into in that, but um, really, really fascinating. I was just want to read the, the entire chapter on every on every gene key, and I'm like, we don't have time for that. Oh goodness. Okay, so the notes here. Um, this is part of a generated channel. It's acting in response. You know, so what or who do you have energy and excitement for? Or the better question, like who are you available to respond to? Who or what is the right pH for your aura? Um, and then also, like, I always kind of joke about this one being hard to get. It's like, who's sticking around while you're playing hard to get, you know? And then can you let that relationship play out over time and allow for that bonding to happen? Um, the entire channel, if you have the full channel, which is where it connects to gate 59, which we're going to get to, um, you would absolutely have to be either an emo you're an emotional authority, number one because this is an emotional wave, the super subtle one. Um, but you'd either be an emotional generator or an emotional manifesting generator, depending on what else is going on in your chart. Now, six, this six um, and this this particular channel, it's the source. It's the, the origin of the emotional wave where they are all generated. It compresses all the waves into down into gate six. So feelings, mood, sensitivities. Um, and this is just like extremely nuanced what goes on here. But then it, like I said, at the same time, it's super subtle for, for all of the different waves that exist. Okay. So the pro programming partner. So of course <laughs> we already spoiled this one because we talked about the gene keys. If the sun is in Virgo and gate six, the earth is automatically opposite in Pisces gate 36. Um, 36 is known as the darkening of the light. It's the gate of crisis. Oh, goodness. Have you been around? You know, this is my sun gate. Um, so this, this has the fear of inadequacy and it's just, yeah, it's a barrel of laughs. Um, you know, these are people who are meant to grow through what they go through, uh, specifically very deep emotional experiences. Um, so, you know, it's one that's just I, this is my sad girl energy. Um, yeah, just being a magnet for it. Uh, crisis prone, debilitating nervousness and anxiety, big overwhelming feelings. Just it's it's Pisces too. It's super, super, super emo. Um, but the high expression of this, you know, because there's always a good side, uh, you'll, it's about learning to sit over time with this vast spectrum of feelings that you have and understand that these experiences are transitory, but they're all of it's there to like teach you something, you know, like letting the intensity move through you, but not have to cling on to it, not creating a story around it, just embracing like the highs and lows of life while, and this is very important, managing the expectations that go along with it. Um, 
Yeah. And then, then at the end of the day, the whole thing is like, you're doing this. It's a collective energy, this one, to be able to like connect with and help others through like just the tur- the turbulence that is life. Like nobody escapes unscathed, you know? So if you can, if you can get your act together and learn how to weather the storms, like that is your job in life. That's, that's in the jinkies. That's my brand, my life's work, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I feel that hard. Um, so yeah, so yeah. Uh, but I, I really do always feel like with this, uh, with that particular energy, it's like, oh goodness, it's about, about figuring out how like for me personally to make life more livable and then sharing it with others to help them get through like the hard stuff but it really helps you connect with people on a super super deep emotional level um if you've heard that episode i i think i stop it like eight to twelve times because i'm crying (laughs) so hard so we're not even we are not even going to go there today. We're I am not in the mood for that today. Okay. So um but I have to laugh because the this this combo, the 6 and the 36, um I really do think, you know, like number one, you get like emotional maturity realizing that there are highs and lows regardless and it's like the darkness and the pain and the sadness does not last forever, hopefully. Um you know that it does pass, but uh the 6 to me it's like it it gives you like a little bit of like emotional defense because man otherwise you know you're you're just like a sitting duck you know so i think um i think that's built built or baked into people when they have this uh polarity whether that's your sun and earth or your north and your south node um anyway I'm just off in Lola land, but um the gate that completes the channel is Virgo gate 59 which forms the channel of mating 59 is known as dispersion. It's the gate of sexuality. And this is considered one of, you know, the creative channels in human design. Um, Specifically, it's the creation of life or making babies. And with this one, it is this thing about bonding with others, like building relationships, partnerships. Um, But with it, it definitely can can jump into things a little too quickly, you know, uh, rather than rather than waiting everything. Right. When it's an emotional wave, that's our theme. We need to wait. Um, but it definitely carries this ability, 59, this ability to break through the aura and create very close, intense bonds with others, very physical. Uh, you know, wants to wants to merge with somebody very warm and caring. You know, it's coming off the sacral on this side, and this, which is literally where new life is made. So those two, you know, like 59 feels very warm and uh you know like it wants to get close to you to touch taste smell the senses that you really need to be in close proximity to another person to experience um yeah so when they come together right we've got we've got we've got our six which is the emotional solar plexus connecting to the 59 and the sacral and i always think the 59 is it has more of that masculine flavor the energy of pursuing right breaking through um and then the six is the more feminine, playing hard to get, you know. So 59, that's somebody wanting to get up close and personal, intimate. And the six is, brings that more guarded emotionality to the connection. Um, you know, and again, I really relate to this because once I feel close to somebody on an emotional level, then I'll let them behind, you know. Th- okay, you can come into the club now. <laughs> we'll move that velvet robe for you. Um, but when the two come together to form the channel of mating, also known as the channel of intimacy, it's what's known as, like I said, it's a creative channel. So making babies, creating life, cultivating close relationships that can even be like business partnerships, relationships, things. Um, you know, but this is not actually where the bond of marriage occurs. That is in a different channel. Um, in this one, you are getting you're getting solar plexus definition again that means you get an emotional wave if you have the whole thing i do not i only have the six um but like i said this one is the more most subtle and steady of the bunch and it's the one that people are often unaware of because it is so chill and it's about closeness so it can take encountering another person to bring the awareness of it to the forefront so if you have this channel or make this channel with someone um that you know like remember remember you're building closeness with them over time with anybody over time you know give yourself time to get to neutral clarity that you actually want to be emotionally 
or physically intimate with this other person. Um, people with emotional waves can be very spontaneous and then later realize that that wasn't correct for them. You know, like, and in this case, it's like jumping into intimacy with someone only to realize, you know, later that they're not somebody you would want to raise a baby with or create a business with or, you know, whatever your whatever that that thing is that you're jumping into. It's like no pump the brakes, you know, we need to take this slow. Um this channel is very fertile, fertile ground. You know, our genes want to reproduce to create life. And this is the root where that desire comes from. Um, and it's an energy too, like that, I think especially the 59 or the whole channel. I don't think the six, <laughs> I don't think on my end of it, it's like, I don't think we're suffering from that problem, but those, that part of it, I think can be misinterpreted um, as flirtation, you know, even when that's not what that person's intending, because that's just what their aura is doing. Right. And it, and automatically you're getting a, you're getting a sacral. So what does the sacral do? Sacral definition is an, is like a warm, inviting aura. I would say it's like a cashmere blanket, like, come on in, you know, come snuggle with me. So I, and I do know people with this full channel and it fascinates me because they are that really, it's such a great description. They are that warm, fuzzy, touchy, feely, are you flirting with me type of person? Yeah. Um, so again, 59 and 6 both are considered like these aura buster energies. They have this ability to break through the org barriers of others, whether anyone is aware of it or not. Um, you know, and you really experience it when you're in the aura of another person. These physical, excuse me, these people are able to draw you in and create physical closeness with you. So again, you really want to like these, these relationships need to be built on your own personal strategy and authority. Okay. So it's like, I am a generator. So the right, right person or the right thing crosses my path. Ooh, I want to get close to them. Right. I mean, do, you know, it's like you would want to still give that time or you're a projector. You want to be invited into that. And a manifestor is going to go inform that person. Like, I want to get close to you. You know what I mean? It's like, you just, you always have to be adhering to your correct strategy and authority there. Um, so, you know, again, waiting that wave out, wait, wait, wait so important and you really want to build um build a relationship based on friendship first you know ideally with this um yeah all about over time and they they do say it's always experienced best as an electromagnetic meaning there's a magnetism there like ooh we we click you know there's sparks like you're drawn to the other person and I just, I have to laugh, you know, because I have the fear and attunement to intimacy, you know, that I definitely do that. Like hold people arms length until the time is right. Like the pH is correct for being close to them. Um, and I know I mentioned this last time in the 59 episode, both of my children have the 59 and I have the six. So we make it together and oh my goodness, like we're attached to the hip. I, I'm obsessed with those. <laughs> I'm obsessed with my kids. Um, so close, so snuggly, you know, uh, I'd love to tell this like, you know, wanting to crawl in, in your sweatshirt and like still be, still be in there. They're both obsessed with still being babies and their, you know, grade school age. Um, there's just something so yeah, warm and fuzzy about them. When my daughter, when we were potty training, she had her little potty and we would hold hands, you know, <laughs> and go together. This is so personal. Um, but just, you know what I mean? Like, the tactile element like if you sit on the couch they gotta be all over you it's like it's just um it's just very very sweet you know but that is a relationship i'm all i'm all about i'm all over you know whereas like other people like i'm not necessarily like that you know clearly um you know it's funny too uh to even even talk about that like with my husband like we you know like the being friends first, the gate six piece for me. It's like, and we were when we met and we knew each other. We had a, like a long distance relationship at first. And then we got married after five years. And then we waited eight years to, to have a child. I didn't, I mean, I was very much adamant. Like, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to hop into anything. And why was that? You know, if you go back to the gene keys, what we we're talking about, about like childhood patterns, it's like, there's stuff that happened. Like my dad left, you know, during that, the time period that Richard Rudd talks about. And I was always so adamant. I'm like, defensively, like, I'm not going to just 
marry somebody. I'm not just going to have a child or children with somebody. Like I want to know over time, right? That this is the person for me, that if I'm going to commit to having a family with somebody, like we are in it together, we are partners. And that's, that's definitely like my, you know, I don't, I don't get very personal on here very often. You know, I say little things, but it's like, that was always just such an important thing to me. People were always like, you waited that long? I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know, are you crazy? Of course I did. Um, because I take it so seriously. It's like so important to me, you know, and, and our kids are our world, but you don't just get there overnight, you know? So anyway, um, moving on. This would be a loose Virgo, Virgo conjunction because 59 is at the beginning of Virgo season and gate six is at the end of Virgo season, you know, and they both, they both occur in that third quarter of the wheel, which is all about purpose, purpose fulfilled through bonding and relationships, you know, and again, this is like being friends first before you are become more intimate with people, both personally and professionally. I just told you that story, you know, it's like, that was definitely the case with us. And, and it's so cute because if it comes up, I mean, it, it rarely does anymore, but when it does, people are like, oh, wow. And you're like, well, we had to learn how to talk to each other. Like we're best friends, you know, like that's just how it is with us. And then, you know, like, of course, and then everything else comes out of that. Um, but uh, yeah. So my esthetician thoughts on this, the connection, um, you know, I was like, here I was at aesthetic next. And I was like with super close friends you know it's like gosh on one hand i'm like oh i want to you know there's different people i would love to meet but um i'm always just one of those people that i can keep it keep things tight you know like there's my bubble um but what's also wild is that when the diaphragm right how, how he talks about that like people who are the right ph we did meet somebody who was like immediately adopted in and I was like, clearly this person is the exact right pH for me, you know, to like be around. And I love it. I love it when that happens. It's super rare for me, but, um, but also so cool. So cool when it does. So yeah, it's like with the six, I think it's like, I like to get close to people on a very deep level. And so big groups are very hard for that to happen with. I'm more of like a one-on-one -on -one or small group, you know, it's just like too much energy floating around. Like, how do I know that I like your vibe if there's just like so much. I mean, it's like, you know, there's what, 1,500, 2,000 people there. Like that's intense. And I, homegirl can't handle it, you know? Um, and I think too, like back in the treatment room, you know, I was always very good. I was always in medical. So, you know, and actually treated patients and HIPAA. It's like, hey, I'm not becoming friends with my patients. Like we have a deep bond and a closeness that we build over time. You trust me as your provider. But you know what I mean? There was always like lines that I, I was very cognizant of and didn't cross. I mean, out of my, my entire time, it was like, there was only ever a small, I probably could count on one hand, how many people actually wound up, um, being some sort of a contact, like with me outside of the treatment room, you know? Uh, because I just, I took it so seriously. It's like, I don't know. It's just different. It's like, I was, I was your girl, you know, but, but, um, but just those lines that you, you know, don't cross. Right. So, uh, and then again, I think, you know, paying attention to the pH of the skin. I just, I love this one for that. I think it's so applicable. Um, yeah. And just realizing like, you're not for everybody and everybody's not for you. Like there really isn't any boundaries and we are, are all connected, but there's just, there's always going to be people you vibe with on that pH level and, and those you don't, and that's okay. You know? So anyway, um, We'll wrap that up. Do you have this? If you're looking at the solar plexus, which is on the right side, the little triangle aiming inward toward the sacral, it is on the tip. It's gate six, if it's colored in black, red, or red and black, it means you have it defined. If it's white, you do not. So look on the other side, it's the 59 colored in. You might be getting the full channel for approximately six days, and maybe you don't have any of it at all, you know, and if that's the case, who, who in your life has it? Where are you observing this happen? You're always going to experience it through other people and through the transits regardless. So curious, you know, you can always let me know over on Instagram at Michaela McLean. Uh, okay. I'll be back soon with more. If this episode was of value to you, I would love it. If you would leave it a five-star rating and review on Apple podcast, because it helps so much. And I also love to read them. They're just, I just, words of affirmation are my love language. <laughs> so 
please. Um, that yeah, it's just helpful, super helpful, and it does it does help push up push up your show on the algorithm and help get it out to more people. So, if you're benefiting from this wisdom and this knowledge, uh, it'd be amazing. It's a little karmic, you know, thing that you can do to help pay it forward. And if you want to learn more human design, of course, you know, we've got the free guide, the $11 classes, the energetic beauty sleep to kind of bypass the whole thing and just do learn it in your sleep, um, all the stuff. And, you know, I've got my golden experience guide course, solo esthetician, love membership, and then energetic aesthetics. Please get on the wait list if you are interested. Cause we, I mean, I'm telling you, y'all get in the rocket ship. We are going to outer space with this. Like, and at the same time, we're going to be super grounded. That's my favorite part. It's like, we got a foot in both worlds on this. And it's going to be freaking amazing. Some days I'm like, how did how did this come to me? You know, how am I so, I don't know. I don't know. This is the point where I'm like, I need, I, I need help. <laughs> I need help getting it out because it's so incredible that it's almost overwhelming. Sometimes the downloads that come about all of this. So anyway, hop on it. Uh, And that's it. You know, of course, until next time, have a beautiful day.